morning and of course happy navratri to everyone this is me jalpa bhat from computer engineering department and today we are having mrs rupam gautam ma'am uh, good morning ma'am it's such a great honor to have you with us uh thank you thank you jalpa yeah sure okay so just uh, let me start with some quick introduction uh, ma'am has a great experience in renewable energy she has uh, she was also featured as asia's most influencing woman in renewables she had worked in different companies like lnt power fourth partner energy private limited clean max and many more recently she is working as essential in strategy and consulting she has also been keynote speaker and a panelist at numerous events for power sectors Uh, ma'am please shower us with your with your venue oh, sorry valuable knowledge over to you ma'am sure sure thank you thank you so much jalpa and a warm welcome to everyone uh, to the students to the faculty and everyone out there so it's been a great pleasure uh, you know being a part of this such good webinar uh, starting off with it uh, just just uh, jalpa i would like to know the composition like uh, uh, how are the students place we have students of every year attending this workshop Yes, ma'am. All the students are attending the workshop. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Then. So, uh, 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 and are the students able to interact with us, or how is it? It's one way. Uh, no, ma'am. It's a two way. Students are able to interact with you uh, with great. some uh, messages and all. Great. Yeah. Great. So, uh, you know, it's a message to the student. Let's have this a very interactive session. I don't want to burden you up with a lot of information. You know, right uh, in the morning, it's a, a happy sunny morning. So let's ensure that you know we keep it two-way communication. Wherever you find any doubt, anything, please type a message or you know just uh, come out of the mute, speak up to us, and then let's have a good webinar. Uh, shall we start, Jalpa? Then I'll start sharing my screen. Yes, ma'am. You can definitely start. Sure. Okay. so uh, the topic today that we are covering is about project management now uh, when we talk about project management there are multiple things that might be coming in your mind uh, project management usually people say is a very big term uh, meant for you know uh, people who are working in the corporates and uh, it, i mean it is something that is not meant for uh, people who are you know either studying or people who are transitioning but if you ask me as such i think project management starts from the very beginning you know not even in schools not even from colleges even from the time we are kids uh, even from the time when we uh, you know uh, when we are actually 2 years 3 years of old if you remember in your uh, uh, small age uh, you might have be having a lot of toys with you but uh, you know every time every kid used to ensure that okay whatever toys i have this is my set of toys okay so i'll manage it accordingly so that's the kind of management that starts from the very beginning similarly in terms of parents also i mean right from the very beginning they keep on managing the finances they keep on managing the home the offices everything so if we see in the overall project management is a part of our life in each and every terms right from the very uh, beginning to the very end but uh, today we'll be focusing more from the perspective of uh, you guys from the perspective of the education part and slowly and steadily since you will be transiting to your corporate life how it would be needed and how it would be required for you to go ahead uh just a introduction with jalpa already gave so probably i'll skip on this uh now when we talk about the goal of the project so the first thing is why do we do a project i mean there has to be some uh, some background working or some output that we are expecting of a project so in terms of very simple language if we define why we do a particular project what is the goal of that project then that goal is probably a desired result of an activity so every activity which is being done has a result now it could be either desirable or non desirable but it has an output so any desired result of an activity which may be achieved within the limits of a certain time interval is known as a goal so if you see the keywords there are certain keywords in this statement uh, probably if someone could uh, type in in the chat and jalpa could let me know what you are understanding so the keywords here is desired result limits and time interval so these three are the main essential parts whenever we do a project or whenever we you know feel of planning a project so 
when we say that okay i am doing this particular xyz project i have a particular goal i have a particular time within which i have to do that and then i have a particular limit now limit could be in terms of multiple things limit could be either in terms of resources like probably when we talk about a project of a college okay so in college often you will see that uh, groups are made so in those groups either you'll have three people or four people and you know just like that so these three and four people are the limits of that particular activity or of that particular goal you would ensure that within these three or four people the goal is achieved you have a particular timeline you have a semester to complete that for example if you are doing in your last semester then you have close to 4 months to complete that and the desired activity is the desired outcome is you get good marks obviously i mean that's the uh, best thing that we actually desire for so this is how you know you define all these three parameters uh, any any questions up till now anything that you people want to ask please feel free to ping in the chat okay uh jalpa you can let me know if uh, you know any questions or messages are coming because i am unable to see that sure ma'am sure ma'am yeah yeah now when we say okay fine we have decided that we we need to have a goal we need to have a timeline we need to have a limit all those things are decided but how do you ensure because if you remember just 2 minutes back i said that the outcome or the uh the final prediction of that goal could be a desirable one or could be a non desirable one now how do we ensure that it's on the desirable part it's on the positive part so there are certain key parameters that we ensure that we take care of and you know using that it has been seen that often people you know get a positive result so when we say that determining the goal as a creative process irrespective of you know the time and those limits because those are already fixed in the uh initial part the the it has a certain procedure so these are the three particular if you could see out here determining the goal indicators now it's not possible that uh you know you can get the outcome in one go for example a very common life example is you cannot start learning or probably be a pro in cycling or uh, you know driving a car in one go you need to have indicators showing you that whether you are on the right track or not so for example if we are learning to drive a car the goal is the end goal is to be a you know proficient driver now uh, there are certain indicators for example uh, first indicator could be you know how to balance the clutch and the brake second indicator could be you know how to you know play around with the gears so all these are good indicators that you know actually tell you that okay this is the way it has to be done and whether you are on the right way or not second is the possible goals of the project now this is you know something which comes from the uh, previous slide only possible goals either plus either minus either neutral or you know something else also that there could be so when we sit making a goal we see what all could be the possible outcomes now when you do again i'm taking the example of uh, the project of the college now there could be multiple outcomes one is you your project exceeds everything i mean you uh, do such a good hard work that you get the best of the project best of the marks second is probably it's a good one not the best of everything but yes you succeed the final could be you are not able to match up to the expectations of the teacher or fourth could be there could be certain unwanted challenges that came your way probably few of your teammates uh, they fell ill and you know there was a time constraint or resource constraint and probably you could not complete your goal at that point of time so the outcome becomes stalled or outcome exceeds the timeline that you have actually defined so all these are possible outcomes or possible goals of the project and third is definitely the describing so i mean just when you define the possible goals then you start uh, analyzing them so it's not that you have only defined it you analyze them what all could be the uh, background inputs that you might be requiring and accordingly you do that and a uh, second important thing that i would like to uh, you know put focus on uh, the goal indicators because you know that's very important and that is why i have put this uh, you know of all these three indicators i have you know talked about this specifically so a uh, goal indicator is very important parameter why because often it has been seen that people keep on working 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 they you know burn the midnight oil they do everything possible either in terms of hard work in terms of resources in terms of timelines but during this whole process they just don't realize that they are not on the right track so it's very important 
to understand that whether we are going the right way or not. If we are not going the right way, the whole hard work, the whole effort goes for a waste. That is why in the complete project management, be it anything, you know, goal indicators are something which is very much required. And, uh, you know, similarly, I'm, I'm keeping, uh, I'm taking a lot of real life examples so that you people could actually relate to it. So another real life example for a goal indicator is uh, when you are either in class 10th or 12th. So the boards are the ultimate goal, actually, but the school keeps on testing you every now and then, either in terms of pre-boards, either in terms of semesters, because they want to see whether the student is on the right path or not. So this is how the goal indicators become very important. Uh, any any questions till now? Any doubts you people might be having? Anything that has come up uh, before I jump on to the next part? Not yet, ma'am. Not okay. yet. Thank you. Now, there are certain methods, you know, to determine the goal. It's it's good that you need uh, that you have determined, but it's not like you can determine it individually or you know with a group of people or you know with some other things so there's there's a set of uh, activities probably or set of methods that you could use either is uh, but there is no uh, again i would like to say there is no restriction defining a goal is totally a creative process the outcomes or the processes or the things that i'm telling you are just acting as a catalyst in helping you to achieve it in a good form but you can always be creative in, you know, defining your own approach because uh, no document talks about any specific uh, model or no documents talk about any specific process to be followed. Just the guidelines are there. So uh, uh, in, in terms of this, one of the major part that has been seen is <clears throat> we, we talk a lot. OK, um, even now, if you see, we are talking a lot, but the main uh, output would be then probably you will have this deck with you, this PPT with you, and so that you could always come back and refer if you find anything or any doubts are there. So documenting something is very important. You know, I could have also spoken a lot about this project without sharing anything with you guys. I mean, there was no need for PPT because I know what I've been doing and I know what is your requirement. But why I have documented all these things is to be sure that all the stakeholders stakeholders are you uh jalpaji the other uh, faculty members everyone and me we are on the same page we understand and we see the same thing and then we discuss on that so documenting and coming to an agreement for a goal for the outcome is one of the most important part which you people should always follow so the moment you will be coming to your corporate life uh, i hope i mean few of the students would be in fourth year also and uh, in few months or so, they would be transitioning to the corporate life. So one lesson that, you know, you should always take back from this webinar is make sure you have everything in written because often in corporates, what happens is, uh, okay, you, you go to a team, you say, fine, can you help me out with this work? People will say, yeah, surely. And then you kind of, uh, you know, uh, you kind of have a support or a backing that, okay, this team fellow would do that thing. But many a times it has been seen that the work is not done. And then you have nothing to back up on that, uh, you know, I actually asked for help. So even for asking for help, it's been suggested, please get it documented. But that doesn't mean that you say even a hi or hello in an email. But, you know, you need to have a balance between what is there, what needs to be there on paper and what needs to be there verbally. So this is one of the important key takeaways that you can take from this whole discussion. Have a very clear mindset sit with people if you have multiple stakeholders sit with them take their views analyze all the viewpoints and then come to an agreement and have this documented so this is how your goal is defined uh this talks a little more on a higher level i'm giving you a basis of the goal because this is the lowest layer for us to go into the project management tools suppose this we'll be talking about project management now, okay, fine, you got the goal, you have taken agreement, you have everything. I mean, you have people around with you. The next important thing is three or four important parameters, which every project needs to have. And this you might have, you know, analyzed in your day-to-day uh, -day life also. For example, uh, your family wants to buy a new car. Now you, you decided on the goal. The goal is buying a new car. Okay, you talk to your family members, you you discuss with them. This is a part of the goal discussion that we were just talking about. Uh, you talk about the indicators that, okay, the car should be uh, probably a sedan. 
uh, you talk about okay it should be a five seater car it should be blue in color or red in color and probably a 1500 cc engine now okay that's all done people are in agreement all your family members are supporting you they say yes let's let's go now the second part is you got it documented also now the last part that remains is the time the timelines the cost and the way you are achieving that goal so everything once set now you cannot go back i mean your family has done a, a, anything and then you say that okay now all these parameters are being satisfied in a mercedes but your family says but we don't have the funds for a mercedes now that whole work that you and your family members probably did in the back has gone for a toss so it's very important that parallelization of deadlines parallelization of cost has to be taken into consideration a good project management person is that who takes into consideration the constant timelines the cost and the way the project is moving ahead so also this was on the cost part the second part is on the timeline part so your family agrees to it but then you get into your own zone you get uh, i mean you got busy with your working and it's it's close to one year and you have not taken a decision so again that whole working goes for a toss again new variants might have entered the market again you'll have to go through the whole process and again that whole cycle will go on so let's ensure that once you are thorough with your goal agreement has been done stakeholder management is done we fix upon the timelines keep on checking the timelines we fix upon the cost keep on checking the cost and we ensure that the project is going the right way any 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 doubts till now any any questions uh, no ma'am okay okay i guess people are enjoying this or uh, you know uh, early morning who takes a session i don't know <laughs> okay so this is now uh, what we would talk about the project management so till here before this we were more talking in terms of uh, the goal setting and everything which would drive us to a good project initiation uh, so when we talk about a project management life cycle there are five key areas that any good project management official should actually be looking at so if you see the five key areas that is uh, the initiation part the planning part the executing part monitoring and control and closure so these five key uh, activities you can say they have been uh, formalized by pmp so uh, pmp and pmi they are the project management institute uh, which is based out in us and all the good project management professionals uh, are usually certified by this uh, agency so it's it's acting like a bible for all the project management tools project management processes guidelines so i'll be across my uh, presentation i'll be talking with reference to that because it's a standard document it's a standard process that has been done across world i mean if you are a pmp professional doesn't matter whether you are in india whether you are in us whether you are in australia you need to follow the same processes it would remain the same and it kind of syncs us what with what we have been discussing of now so uh, of these five processes let's take up the, uh, the initiation part first so uh, when we talk about the initiation of a project we need to first create an idea idea goal anything i mean idea and goal remain synonym in this particular case then you kind of identify the project vision and objectives so now you have to correlate by what we uh, talked about with terms of goal in the initial part so you have a vision you have a objective you are going to purchase a car you have a vision because my family is expanding i need a, a four wheeler i i'm done with the two wheeler earlier we were two people now we are four people so we have a objective we have a vision to do that so that is why you need to identify that third is the complete scope of the project now often it has been seen that people create the idea you know do everything but they forgot to talk about the scope now similar thing you know let's let's go back to the example of uh, doing a project in a college you got the project you had four people along with you 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 are very good on the time part you are very good on the cost part you are very good on everything but then one fine day one of the uh, you know one of your friend uh, a part of the same group comes and tell you that okay i have done my part now this part is remaining on the contrary you were of this view point that this part has to be done by him or her so there comes a pause there comes a clash and there comes a turbulence in the whole project cycle 
so we need to ensure that the scope of work is very much clear and very much defined in the very first beginning of the project to be initiated so you have to tell people very specifically that okay this part of the project has to be done by you this part has to be done by you and this part has to be done by you similarly when we talk about uh, the project deliverables now what are the deliverables uh, deliverables are the outcomes basically so you are doing an activity you are keep you keep on doing it keep on doing it but there has to be some output so you in the very very first part so initiation is more on the documentation part you you kind of start something so it's it's less on the execution part but more on the uh, documentation part so uh, you list down all the key deliverables that you will be giving either to the, your internal teams or to your customers or anyone then is um, you you tell the customers and the project stakeholder that's very important i mean your team should know whom you have to project the uh, work that has been done i mean just as in case you people know which is the teacher or who is the teacher whom you have to submit the project so it should be well aware that who is the final authority or who is the final buyer of this whole working that you are doing fourth is list the key roles and responsibility this again forms a part of the scope of work only as part of scope of work you can identify the key roles and responsibilities then is a organizational structure for the project so often it has been seen that you know people the the working level keeps on doing and keeps on doing keeps on doing but there are certain things which might might not be in your scope and you require someone higher either in uh struggle either in organizational belt or in terms of uh, you know knowledge or anything to take up those issues so for example even in your college uh, there might be certain areas where your teacher might not be able to answer that particular question so uh, they they usually say that no problem either we'll check with the hod or we'll get back to you so that kind of a structure you know whom to approach you know that first you have any problem you can approach your teacher the problem doesn't get solved you approach your hod still the problem remains you approach your uh, college head and still it approaches then probably you could go to the uh, owner or to the government uh, entity who's representing that so that becomes very important uh, next part comes in the overall implementation plan so you have a vision you have a goal you have the timelines you have everything now you want to make a plan okay without plan you you just can't move on it so just like when we were talking about buying a car you made a plan that okay i'll be getting my salary or i'll be getting my bonus in july so let's go and purchase the car in july and uh, we can fix up the emi so as per my salary probably i can afford an emi of 10000 every month so you have a plan in your mind you have you know a, a particular process that you need to go and achieve that outcome next comes which is a very important one and you should actually uh you know take lot of a uh, uh, lot of importance to this particular part is list any risk issues and assumptions so everything goes down well everything is good till the time you don't face something which was not expected so expect the unexpected is what we call in the uh, corporate language before starting off with any project think from a 360 point of view i mean think uh what could be the risk what could be the challenges that you might face in that project and then list them down try to complete them or try to you know uh answer them as much as possible because no project is risk free i mean there would be a lot of risk a lot of issues that might be happening but at the end of the day uh at the end of the day you have to ensure that you have them in your mind or in your documents from before uh next is the project team which we already talked about uh you can probably now with pandemic going on i think everyone has gone virtual so no need to set up a project office you could actually do it from your homes now and then uh, you know perform a phase review so you know you create the plan you divide that plan into phases and then you kind of review it any 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 issues we have till the initiation any doubts anything uh, yes ma'am uh, yes ma'am two three questions arise by students yeah uh, let me tell you one by one first one is what to do if we miss the initial targets in budget mhm mm okay uh, so that's a very okay. important question uh, i'll quickly take this up this is where this particular statement comes into existence so there might be a place or there might be a time where you might have you know missed on to the budget but in a project we always risk and we always note down those risk and keep a contingency for us 
So for example, if the project is for, let us say 10 lakhs rupees, when we are planning that project, we foresee all the risk. We foresee that, okay, my payment might get delayed or uh, my check might get delayed uh, in getting processed. So the first level of budget is definitely to be missed out. We are definite to miss on that. So we always keep a 5% as per the normal trends, 5% of the total project value is kept as contingency for all these issues. In case any uh, skipping or anything happens, we can always cover that up. And second important point on this aspect is now we are moving. You might you people might be hearing a lot about the term which is known as agile. So agile is the new project management. What we are trying to do is rather than, uh, you know, making a full fledged plan, we plan for short, short terms. We plan for two weeks rather than creating a plan for two years. So after two weeks, we do this. We perform a phase review. We see how our budget is going. My, uh, for example, if we skipped it, then probably in the next two weeks of phase that we'll be make, making, we'll take care of that and we'll adjust it in our next weeks. Okay, so how that's how you, you know, kind of control the risk, you kind of control the contingencies and ensure that even though if something happens, your project is on the track. Okay, yeah. ma'am. The second one is uh, how to tackle the deadline in large projects where client want, uh, want to add an extra feature at last or in between? Very good question. I appreciate the person who has asked this. This point, when we talk about project deliverables and we talk about complete scope of the project, this is where it becomes very important to, uh, you know, identify the scope, not only internally, but with client also. So often you will see that there is a scope document which gets signed between the client and between the team. For example, if I'm a company, and we have a client for whom we are working, we sign a scope of work beforehand so that they are aware that anything, if it complete, if it comes extra, would either be need to be absorbed in terms of cost or in terms of timeline. So if client, uh, even after the final sign off of scope of project or critical project deliverables comes back to you and say that, okay, this is a new engagement or new activity that I want you to do. You have all the rights from PMI or from PMP or from project management to either increase the cost, increase the timeline or cut down on anything which the project, which you feel and the client mutually feel could be not done. So it's very simple. Uh, I mean, you say that, okay, if you want me to do this, there are three options. Either the timeline would increase either the cost would increase or probably any activity from the original scope of work needs to be deducted. So that's how you handle this. And this is where these two these two areas become very important. Yes, ma'am. And the last one is how to handle the failure of a project. On the failure part, we'll come later. We have just started on planning. So probably I'll take this question once we are. On yeah, the sure, floor. sure. Ma okay. okay, thanks. Uh, okay, planning of a project, we talked about it a little, uh, I mean, in the earlier slides also. So I'll just touch upon this. Uh, now you people, I mean, from the questions that have come, I am getting a feel that you are understanding what we are talking about. So when we are planning a project, uh, we actually create a plan. Now, a uh, project plan is the overall plan. I mean, wherein you define the timeline, you define the budget, you define the stakeholders, the scope, everything. So now I can be sure that uh, you, you people are understanding what we are on the right note. Second is you create a resource plan. Okay. So one is project plan. And then to complete this project, I mean, to complete this whole uh, assessment, you need to have resources as we just discussed. So then you create a resource plan also. So if you see all these things, your resource, financial, quality, communication, risk, and supplies, these are cutting across all the layers. So these are in every phase of a project. You will see a financial plan being discussed in the execution part also. You would see a quality uh, parameter discussed even in the closure also. So these are few of the parameters. So these are basically the support parameters for this particular plan. If you want to successfully implement a project plan, you need to have a solid resource plan. You need to have a solid financial plan, a solid quality plan, communication plan. Communication uh, is more from the perspective of any issue or any feedback or any weekly updates you want to give to the team internally, externally, client, anyone. So that's how the communication works. So you need to know beforehand 
who all are the people whom you have to send the email like jalpa madam knew that who are the people who would be attending this webinar so she made a communication plan she sent the email to all of you she sent a email to me also wherein you people are the internal stakeholders i am the external stakeholders so this is how she you know managed the complete ecosystem then the risk we already talked about you need to have a risk plan in terms of mitigation in terms of identification and then you need to have a you can always you know take this contact the supplies as a uh, procurement so uh, ensuring that the supplies the material is always on time in case of you know any infrastructure or hardware project so you need to ensure that your stakeholder management from procurement is also very strong so all these plans are a gist of you know whatever we discussed out here so for all these things you kind of create a plan get it vetted by all the stakeholders sign that off and then start with your execution part so once you have a project once you have a resource plan everything in project plan you have you know identified the activities that are to be done suppose that what we do is uh, since we have already told the requisite resources that your scope of work is this your scope of work is this so the team starts carrying out all the planned activities i mean as per their responsibility as per their timelines they start doing it but it's not that easy i mean had it been so easy then there would have been no requirement of a project manager i mean there would have been no requirement of a project uh, management official pmo office would not have existed usually things don't go as planned so there could be multiple challenges either there could be delay from the supplier or there could be delay in the clearance from the client or there could be delay in um you know in executing some uh, legal formalities so all these things uh, or there could be a definite challenge which is on the resource part so people might fall ill uh, often with uh, you know a working class it has been seen that they leave the job very quickly so these are some of the controllable and uncontrollable challenges that we have been seeing so as a project manager as a project management official you need to focus on control you need to focus on supervising you need to focus on whether the planned uh, activities are being done as per their uh, planning or not in case they are not being done you should always be ready with a plan b you should always be ready to let people know important people know whom we have identified in this this communication plan talks about important people who needs to be there so you as a project manager may need to ensure that you apprise the important people about the changes or a failure so at first level try to sort it yourself in case it's a big issue you are not able to do that it's always good to apprise the people who are you know above you so that after you know something has gone into a mess it doesn't come on you that you didn't tell at the right time so raising a flag raising an issue at the right time is also a important uh, responsibility of project manager similarly uh, you you track the progress which is also part of all this you track the milestones whether they have been achieved or not and then uh, often it has been seen that uh, people and ma time management are the two main concern areas everywhere so you might be having close to 15 20 people okay working for a project let's say but those 15 20 all of them are in different directions all of them have a different point of view you have done everything you have defined the scope you have defined the timelines you have given people their um, scope of work uh, you know their plan everything but now they are just not on the same page so it's the it's the uh, duty of the project management uh, person to ensure that the team comes on same page i mean there might be issues thought process might not match but at least from the project perspective things should be on the same level so conducting team building exercises ensuring that if any friction comes or if any a uh, challenge between two individuals or two teams are coming you solve it i mean rather than letting those two teams getting involved and the work getting hampered so the all these are the execution of a project uh, details along with that the responsibilities of a project manager also then you hold status review meetings to ensure everything is on schedule because uh, until and unless even in our colleges we have seen i mean teacher has given the homework so until and unless you know she she keeps on reminding that okay tomorrow is the last day you need to give it to me people i mean just forgot 
so they feel ki okay we'll be giving it no problem so a proper uh, you know poking if we call in a very lame language is very important to ensure that your project is on the right time and then the final and the most important thing that i have been focusing right from the very beginning is to ensure that all your document changes all the changes whether in planning whether in the process anything that gone amiss you have done some changes needs to be documented as part of the uh, project change plan any any questions we have received till now jalpa on this or should i move yes ma'am yes ma'am an yeah. interesting question and i think it is too relatable when it comes to a select a team or assign the work between them right uh, the question is how to handle the conflict on your team or what to do if a team member is underperforming yeah very very interesting question and in fact that's why i was you know focusing on this part so it's it's a natural process you know uh, this this first of all a project manager should be very calm uh, in uh, in their approach so if two people or if two teams they are having a friction they are not on the same page first of all you need to understand what is going wrong so rather than jumping on to conclusions or this is the worst thing that you can do never take any one side i mean if two individuals or two teams are you know getting into an argument on a project or anything ensure that you remain neutral because that's how a project manager works you understand the problems you understand hear them out and then probably either come to a neutral solution if possible and if it's not possible so when you know there have been seen that people underperform so there are three four areas to manage it either you you know uh, it's not good to say directly to be precise that you are underperforming so you won't be a part of my team i mean that's the last thing that you can do so for example when you are doing this review meeting okay so rather than talking to other people first you should talk to that person who's underperforming so for example let's say jalpa don't mind i'm just taking your name so in case let's say that jalpa is underperforming and you know i have four more people in the team so my uh, take would be that Uh, you know in the next meeting i asked jalpa that uh, hi jalpa hope the uh, you know the project is on time uh, hope you are not uh, you know uh, following or you are not uh, having any problems into it so there would be two outcomes either jalpa would say that yes i have some problems and uh, you know as a project manager i'll get to know the problems and help her solve that or jalpa would say no i don't have a problem so if jalpa says the first thing then the first action is to resolve her issues so that she can work completely because no one wants to underperform with their whole, whole hearted heart okay there are often uh, you know challenges there are often uh, issues because of which underperformance is having we have seen only close to 5% people who actually don't want to work so that's a different set of persons but second case if jalpa says that no i don't have any issues then in that point of time my take would be that okay jalpa from next time let's have you as the team lead and let's ensure that we have the time uh, you know we have all the timelines and all the controls and all the budgets being in space from your end so now what happens even in school you would have seen teacher used to make the naughtiest boy uh, or the naughtiest girl the monitor so when you are entrusted with an uh, you know with a uh, with a responsibility people start changing so one process is this second is if there is a friction between the teams then you should try to resolve it amicably you should try to tell them that okay as a project manager i would be the final authority to talk about the outcomes and as an outcome i feel this is this should be the right track and lastly as i said if no one i mean all your methods all your tricks all have gone for a fall then it is high time that you change the individual or you change the team because you cannot risk your project for uh, any individual or any team on that terms i guess that should answer the question right yes ma'am yes ma'am okay A any any more question we had on this jalpa yes one more but i guess uh, it's after that uh, one more slide uh yeah i have okay. uh, three four more slides okay fine okay so probably what you can do is uh, you just keep on the questions let me just complete it and then i can take them up together yeah sure ma'am okay so uh, next when we talk about the monitoring and control of a project so as you know this is again a part of this you have a plan which was made and then you are seeing the actual performance also so you need to have a vis a vis between both of them 
I mean, uh, it's it's very important, and this also forms a part of stakeholder management that uh, if if your planned performance is not being done as per uh, your thought process, uh, then you need to take some steps. Now, those steps could be either preventive or could be corrective. Preventive in the terms you are seeing that okay, this particular individual is underperforming. I have told this person, I have told Jalpa twice that Jalpa, you need to perform, but she is not performing. As a result of which, my project timeline is getting hampered. Then I need to take a preventive action. Okay, now this preventive action would be either to replace Jalpa with someone else or to give her responsibility to some other other individual. So that's a preventive action, something which before any you know uh, any. Issue happens, you take a call, and then in case you know, I as a project manager did not take that into notice, and the damage has already been done because of Jalpa's ignorance. We have already missed the timelines. Then the kind of action that I'll be taking would be a corrective action. Then probably I'll switch on to the responsibilities. I'll do some juggling. I'll ensure that if I could make out some time from the other activities. So all those are corrective actions. So as a project manager, it's my uh, responsibility to ensure what action has to be taken and at what time. Uh, similarly, you need to provide the uh, uh, the outcomes or how the progress is happening to the important stakeholders that we just talked about as in the communication plan. Uh, then you need to ensure that any changes if are happening. For example, Jalpa changed her mind and now she's working effectively. She's working superb. So now there would be certain changes. Probably it is possible that I might be before timeline. So I could see some other key areas where the problem is there and then probably utilize that time of Jalpa, which is being saved in those. So all these juggling, all these puzzle making is a uh, you know, controlling part, it comes under the monitoring and controlling part of a project and has to be taken up by the project management. And finally, uh, we talk about the closure of a project. So execution is done very effectively. Uh, everything has happened. Then we talk on terms of closure. Now, once the project has been done, first thing is you ensure that the outcome is as per the expectation, as per the initial goal that we actually set then you need to ensure that your client is all on the same page, whatever outcome you have prepared in terms of either the tender or either the document that was signed, that's in place with that and your client also acknowledges it. Rest is that you have taken into consideration all the important parameters like legal, governance, you are not, uh, you know, uh, you're not having any challenge pertaining to this. So this often forms a part of IT solutions. Usually in IT, there's a lot of uh, importance which is being given to governance, which is being given to legal entities, uh, ethical uh, entities. So, uh, you know, you need to ensure that all those parameters, all those check boxes are ticked. Then you need to ensure that once it has been done, you take the sign off from everyone and then you formally declare that my project is closed. Okay. Now, uh, there are a few more parts onto this. Uh, then once the project is closed, you need to come out. See, every project has to have some value. Without value, it's nothing. I mean, when you're buying a car also, the kind of value that it's providing is uh, it's saving you from the rainy days, from the sunny days, your family of four can uh, travel together. So all these are the value. Now, this value is either tangible or intangible, something that you can see and feel and something which you cannot see or feel. So jot down everything as part of your, uh, you know, uh, process closure method and present it to the client, present it to the internal team so that they are well aware of it. And then finally, the two most important thing is recognize your team members. Okay. Everyone has done a, put in a lot of effort. So we often miss to, you know, acknowledge efforts from people. Even in day-to-day -day life, you know, our parents do a lot of things for us. Our siblings do a lot of things for us. We, we take them for granted. So we say, oh, it's their responsibility. Agreed, it was their responsibility. But at the end of the day, uh, I mean, it was not something that they are bind to do. End of the day, they could either move out from that also. So let's let's appreciate people. Let's appreciate them. Tell them that what went right. Where are the areas which in we can improve? And this, I think we should be doing in our day-to-day -day life also so that, you know, human relations remain intact. And it's mostly with human relations that we get our work done.
and lastly but not the least in fact uh, free all your resources okay so you might be using four or five people in a project now if your project is done everything is completed you need to ensure that people are freed out from their responsibilities so that they could go and be a part of some other project often it has been seen that uh, your project manager would say no no there are you know i might have some uh, back questions being asked by the client that's okay you can always devote an hour or two but freeing your resources is very important for their growth and for the overall uh, company and the other projects growth so th this is when done uh, i mean you close on the uh, project part keep a check box on the finance on the timelines on the resources on the outcomes everything perfect your project stands closed so that was it from my side jalpa uh, you know just wanted to give a high level view to these kids uh, on the project management part so i think i would have been successful in doing that now we can take the questions whatever we have okay ma'am the question is uh, suppose the client is not happy about the quality of the project outcomes how to handle that unhappy stakeholder or the situation right so as i was saying initially this was a very big problem which was coming and uh, you know even after completing the uh, full project often clients were unhappy and they didn't give the full payments and it was becoming a big issue that is the reason that now from uh, the waterfall approach the waterfall approach is you plan everything you do everything and then give the outcome to the client we are now slowly transi transiting to agile approach so agile approach talks about you don't do everything in one go for example you have to uh, prepare a software for a client so there are four five modules earlier as per waterfall method what would we have done is we would have created everything and then given the outcome tested and everything now what happens is you create one module you create the module check on your budget check on your timelines go back to the client take their feedback whether you know you are on the right track or not if you are not on the right track make the changes as suggested again go back to the client take the approval till the time you don't get final approval you you keep on repeating that cycle this ensure that final at the day of final delivery no one says that i am not happy so now agile is the new way of uh, you know talking to people it's still it's it has come into the market but it's still developing so by the time these kids would be moving out of college probably they would be facing a lot of agile environment so it's like breaking the complete uh, process into small small bits doing that small portion going back to the client getting it checked and then again doing the next part this ensures that you know all the challenges of unhappiness all the challenges of budget time everything is sorted scope of work also so it is like con uh, keep contacting the client yes yes right. even now yeah. we keep contacting the client but we more so you know contact them not from the outcome but more so from a regular hello hi any scope changes or anything but agile talks about that you need to take a buy in you need to take a consensus from client that whether this small part is correct or not so that any errors or challenges could be removed Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two more questions. Yeah. Uh, the second last is, uh, how do you motivate your team members? A uh, very important, and this question has been a question for everyone, to be frank. So yes, yes, for us also. <laughs> not only in project, yeah. in day-to-day -day life also. So first thing is, you cannot keep everyone happy. So let's accept that fact. that uh in a in a team of 15 people if you have it is impossible that you keep all 15 happy if you are trying doing that then definitely all 15 would be happy but the most unhappiest person would be you so so don't try to do that secondly appreciation as i was talking to you often in companies and often in um, you know colleges schools wherever we are having interactions people don't get recognized and you know no one as i was telling you no one wants to underperform or no one wants to be ideal they might sit idle for a day or two but after that everyone you know wants to work everyone wants to study and you know all those things so recognition and appreciating the efforts now what happens all five fingers are not equal so in a team if you have five members each one of them 
might have their different capabilities and different weaknesses so as a project manager what i do is whenever i start a project i do a swot analysis now swot analysis your strength weaknesses opportunity and threat of each, each individual so i give this activity to each one of them that okay you do a swot analysis and come back to me and let's have a discussion so when i get this kind of a swot analysis from the own perspective people tell me that okay this is my strength this is my weakness these are my threats these are my uh, opportunities i as a project manager you know bucket them accordingly so if i know that someone is really good in excel i would probably keep him in the analysis part if i know someone is really good in you know talking or uh, communication so i would keep that person in the bd part you know to interact with client and stakeholders so that is how you as a manager you know map out everyone's best zone you try to do that definitely you can't do the complete thing but you try to do that and ensure that uh, you know uh, at least 80% of the job is done now once you're done with this the rest remains you know communication so we we people don't talk too much uh, we we people talk only when we have work or probably when you know it's it's any festivity or anything like of that sort this culture of not speaking or not talking uh, and you know uh, the virtual world that we have you know now come into uh, existence is something which is hampering the team motivation so when people don't talk without any work uh, it's 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 something that you don't know anything about earlier why were managers more successful i mean if you see uh, in the probably 30 40 years back people used to work even extra apart from their scope of work why only because of the respect they used to have for their seniors or for the managers and this was because their team or their manager was involved with them personally nowadays uh, you know people don't even know who are who all are the members in their team members family so it's very important to have a personal touch either with any of the person it could be your team it could be your um, uh, clients anyone when you give a personal touch even in terms of uh, you know issues people come back to you and they tell you that okay i'm facing this this particular challenge so can you help me with this and you kind of get a sense that okay i need to support this so supporting at the right time recognizing people appreciating people giving them their strengths and you know motivating them through multiple activities like team building activities you know remembering their birthdays these are all techniques that managers have been using of long to keep it happy and i think anyone can use it i mean not why not the why only the managers i mean these applies to anyone you probably all of you go back today say uh, thank you mom i am sure your mom would have a very big smile on her face so that's how you keep people happy oh uh, yes ma'am and one last crucial question yeah uh, how to handle the failure of a project yes so we ensure that a project doesn't fail uh, and that's why things like agile and all those things are coming into picture but still uh, no project is 100% so there are always chances of uh, you know uh, failures coming into existence so in case i mean your team or your project uh, gets into that unfortunate fate of being a failure then there are only two things you can do first is to take back the learnings what led to the failure of that project i mean what didn't go right what was bad or what was wrong where did where did you fail in each step you need to do a, a reassessment uh take those learnings i mean ensure that uh, i mean you don't do them again the team doesn't do them again and probably move on because uh, i mean there's nothing if it has failed there would be two options either you or someone else would have to do it again or you might not have to do it at all the client thinks that okay i i don't want to do with you i want to do with someone else now some other company so these are the two options but the high level outcome would be that you you take the learnings back i mean uh, definitely no project manager would be you know uh, in in process of keeping you back on the same project i mean that's a very less chance that uh, if if it has failed then the same team continues teams are often changed uh, so the only aspect is that you ensure that you don't do that again but the chances of overall project failures jalpa uh, they are very 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 minimal i mean 
usually a portion of a project can fail but the complete project failure uh, is now tough in nowadays because of the technology because of the communications that we are having the outcomes we are having so some portion client might not be happy with but the complete failure uh, is something that i have not seen in last 10 or 12 years yes ma'am yes yeah okay so i don't think there's no question no question at all okay and how we are doing on time good we are yeah it's open. great yeah thank you so much ma'am for an enlightening presentation it was such an interactive session and no we are so grateful oh. for the time and efforts you took to share your thoughts it was an amazing experience thank you thank you ma'am no worries thank you thank you so much jalpa and i'll be sharing this deck with you uh, probably on your email id you can share with the kids yeah great ma'am yeah Thank okay. you thank you so much everyone thank you yeah.